Hello, Mary Mead. So I want to review a book. It seems that today is the day for reviewing tiny little books because this is the Little Book of Crystals by Judy Hall. And I have to say, I paid uh, one dollar for this book, so basically less than for a cup of coffee. There we go. Uh, and I definitely got my money's worth for that. However, would it be worth? Uh, let me see here. It says that originally this book was seven, no, eight. No, it's seven ninety nine. So it's eight uh, U.S. dollars. Hell no. Uh, this is such a quick read that uh, it's not worth eight dollars. I mean, I have big, uh, basically, books that are three times this size that doesn't have pictures, so they are just written word that are less than eight dollars. So no, but if you can find it in a bargain bin, definitely it is worth it. So what is this? It basically tries to be a introduction guide for how to work with crystal magic and crystal healing. And it succeeds, sort of. The problem is that while it do include some information, on some um, fairly common and inexpensive stones like hematite and rose quartz, uh, rock crystal, and a few of those. It also includes some very specific stones that are only found in one particular place in the world. And while they are, and I'm not gonna say anything against that, most of these stones I don't have myself, so I can't tell you how useful they are, but they might be extremely useful, but wouldn't somebody who is so much into crystal healing that they would spend that much money on a stone? And I mean, I, I have looked up and some of these stones go for quite a bit of cash. Then they would probably not be getting an itsy bitsy tiny beginner's guide to guide them through it. So it's sort of who is this book for, actually? Uh, that's basically what I am thinking, because... I actually thought about writing a book like this once, which was basically would basically be 10 of the most common stones used, um, and then just going through some basic things that you can do with them. But then I wouldn't include expensive stones on that list. It would be one a stone for each chakra and then three basically of the stones that are most useful. It would get you a basic kit and my goal was to make sure that you can get that entire kit for under $20 so that it would be easy for people to get started. And some of the stones on this in this book are definitely that. But then you have some very specific ones that are expensive and it, yeah. Well, enough of that. Uh, let's have a look what's in this book, shall we? I come here, little introduction. We have an introduction which has the chapters. Crystal history, crystal power, crystal attributes. It basically goes through the basics of uh, using crystals metaphysically. Then you have a quick reference, uh, which has showing a crystal, clean, cleansing a crystal, programming a crystal, using a crystal, and crystal essences. I like this chapter. It both goes through various ways of cleansing them, basically all that you need to know. And I particularly like the section about basically programming a crystal and having an intent with it, because I believe that there's a very big difference between just throwing on a piece of jewelry with a stone in it, and doing so with intent. And here you speak the intent, you say to the crystal, I want you to work for me for so and so and so. And I believe that can make it a lot more powerful. So, yeah. Then you have uh, key crystals. You have uh, Shangite, Bloodstone, or Auralite, um, Anandalite. These are some of these very specific ones that are quite expensive. Uh, Aurora Quartz, Jade, 
uh, Red Jasper, Eye of the Storm, which is also an extremely rare stone. Um, Goldstone, Green Aventurine, Rose Quartz, Citrine, Black Tourmaline, Turquoise, Amethyst, Selenite, uh, various forms of quartz, and smoke quartz. So, yeah. And all is beautifully illustrated. You can see the pretty pictures of stones. I am. Um, it's a very pretty book, definitely. Also, like, it's not that. Um, a lot of people are very snobbish about their set rain. This book isn't. And, and here's the thing. Absolutely. If you can afford it, get an untreated uh, citrine that just has come out of the ground as a citrine. But that costs money. Not everybody has the money to do that. And basically a heated amethyst, which most cheap citrines are, will also do the job because they are the same type of stone. It's just that the chemical composition changes when uh, amethyst is heat treated and it becomes a citrine. So it is not as good as something that's natural, but it doesn't mean that, no, 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 it's garbage. Some uh, people had a hand in it. No, no. If you can't afford a citrine that's natural, a heat-treated amethyst will will work for you. Uh, so, yeah, I like that it's not snobbish about that. I like the way the book is written. It's easy to understand, easy to follow. It's a joy to read. Judy Hall is a good author. So, yeah, uh, I don't agree with everything she has to say. But all in all, this is a good little book. And I think that if you're just starting out with uh, crystal healing, it could be good. It's not so much information that you're overwhelmed, but at the same time it goes into some detail about the stones selected. It's just stone selection I have a little bit of a problem with, because um, getting Eye of the Storm will cost you a very pretty penny. Uh, I think that for a beginner's guide, she should have kept it to basic stones, because, for example, there, there's some special amethysts in here. Um, what was it called? It doesn't matter right now, but it's you can only find that amethyst in one particular cave. And I understand that that works incredibly well, but regular amethyst will also do the job. They might not do it as perfectly, and it's much more likely that a new practitioner will get a regular piece of amethyst and work with that for a while, and then for them to spend $200 on a piece of stone that they can only get from one particular place. So yeah, I think that some of those special stones can be a little bit overwhelming. Uh, yeah, let, let's just say that of those special stones she has, I own zero of them. I think there's three or four of them in there. I own none of them. And I have been practicing with crystals for, what is it now? I think I started when I was 12, when I'm 35. And some of them I haven't even heard about before this book. Now, don't get me wrong, now I want them. <laughs> so the way they're described in here, uh, I of course have to do some more research to see if uh, the book is actually right. But uh, now I want those stones, but it doesn't make it very beginner friendly. So, but other than that, I think this book is a pretty good one. Would I pay $8 for it? No, I don't think it's worth that. It's too small. But if you can get it in a bargain bin, it might be a fun little read for you. And it's definitely a good little book to basically, let's say that you get this one cheaper for bargain bin. You get some nice stones from a stone shop. Uh, don't need to be very expensive one to throw them all in a gift basket. And you have a very nice little gift. So yeah, I am happy with this book, and that is my review of The Little Book of Crystals by Judy Hall. So yeah, 
I hope you have enjoyed this review. Have a great day and blessed be.